We were all obsessed with creating a digital currency that would be controlled by individuals instead of governments. Bitcoin. Um, so this is an ATM. What we're going to do is transform the traditional banking industry. They will have to basically uh, give up the kind of monetary sovereignty they've had and the enormous power that uh, they've been able to wield. I am confident there will be a form of settlement that will be a cryptocurrency. The PayPal team is likely the most talented team ever assembled in Silicon Valley. Why didn't they pursue it? Now, this is still pretty far-fetched, but it is not quite as far-fetched as you might think. Why does Peter Thiel think he met Satoshi back in 2000, almost a decade before Bitcoin happened, at an obscure conference in Anguilla? And why did PayPal's genius programmer CTO Max Levchin turn out to be so skeptical about Bitcoin once it came around? This is the PayPal story from a new angle. Back in 1998, Peter Thiel and Max Levchin wanted to make person-to-person -person payments possible without any bank in between. Credit cards were pretty much limited to merchants, cash only works in person, and checks just seemed out of date in the coming digital age. Smartphones were not around yet, but the predecessor, the Palm Pilot, found some adoption, especially in the tech-savvy areas. Thiel and Levchin founded Confinity and built an app for the Palm Pilot that people could use to send and receive money using public key cryptography a technology which is also used in Bitcoin. You could call this Palm Pilot application a digital wallet. And this sounds quite revolutionary for the times, but it actually kind of wasn't. You know, Bitcoin didn't just come from nowhere in 2008. It had a long history of breakthroughs in digital currency. From eGold, which will play an important role later on, to Adam Beck's Hashcash, DigiCash by David Chaum, Bmoney by Vaidai, and Bitgold by Nick Szabo. The Palm Pilot digital wallet was not a success and left academics as well as investors quite unimpressed. Unfortunately, Confinity was pitching its concepts amid a series of spectacular digital currency failures, including the recent bankruptcy of DigiCash. To the assemblage of financial crypto experts, Thiel and Levchin came off as arrogant, uninformed outsiders unaware of the decade of wasted effort before their arrival on the scene. They presented their idea and prototype over a hundred times and kept falling flat. But they still believed in the product and kept going. They also started allocating some resources to another smaller project which they wanted to test. They didn't think this new project was as exciting as the beaming of money with Palm Pilots, but they still gave it a shot. This new project was about sending money over email, which, yeah, was named PayPal. It's always incredible how a new technology seems obvious in retrospect, but at the time of creation, no one is even thinking of it. Technology is by definition non-repetitive, and every moment in technological history only happens once. There's a point where things are developed for the first time, yep. and then there's a point where they become normal and standard and not even surprising. So the PayPal, the big PayPal insight that we sort of came up with in the summer of 99 was the idea of linking money and email. It seems really simple, basic in retrospect, although we had spent six, seven months in the business without thinking of that beforehand, and it turned out that was a really uh, key idea. Once someone's thought about it, very easy to explain. Before the fact, um, nobody had thought of it. What's even more interesting here is that throughout the years, PayPal, like all financial players, struggled with the innovator's dilemma popularized by Clayton Christensen in 1997. Square should have started Strike, but didn't. PayPal should have started Square, but didn't. Visa should have started PayPal, but didn't. Diners Club should have started Visa, but didn't. And Western Union should have started Diners Club, but didn't. Back in 1999, PayPal launched and found its early niche on eBay, where it helped to connect sellers and buyers more easily than a long and complicated bank transfer would. There is another parallel to Bitcoin here. Bitcoin was popularized in its early days through Silk Road, a similar marketplace application. They were similar, but let's just say Silk Road had very different products. Silk Road was like the Amazon of drugs. Meanwhile, there was this other guy who had similar ideas during these times. Elon Musk's vision was much broader and bigger though. He wanted to digitize the whole financial industry with X.com. It didn't happen back then, but it might actually happen in the future. Musk's acquisition of Twitter is like one Lego piece in this equation. Buy Twitter, copy WeChat. Yeah, pretty Fine. much. <laughs> yes. Elon actually made the same learnings as the PayPal founders. Few people cared about his vision, many people cared about emailing money. There was a little feature that just seemed like an obvious feature, which was the ability to transfer money from one uh, person to another by, by entering a unique identifier, like an uh, email address. Um, that was like just a sort of a little feature, but then whenever we demonstrate the product, um, people would, wouldn't get excited about the consolidated financial services, but they would get excited about emailing money.
So as you can guess, at the turn of the century, PayPal and X.com fought over the same market. X had an advantage because it had a longer runway through the millions Elon made after his previous startup exit. This runway was important because neither of the companies has actually figured out how to make any money with their product. They did quite the opposite in fact. They threw money at their users for growth. Luke Nose, Confinity's head of marketing, had examined other digital financial players' efforts to court customers. Each new user of Beans, Flues or DigiCash would receive a free nominal sum of digital currency. By the same logic, Confinity decided to confer $10 on each new PayPal user. But Nosek wanted to go beyond the competition, so he began considering how free money could grow the payments network, not just lure individuals. This scheme led to PayPal growing 10% per month. I mean, per week. No, actually 10% per day for a while. So PayPal and X.com burned through their money in a literal spending war of who can throw more money at users for a longer time until they got both hit on the head. eBay launched its own person-to-person -person transaction service with Billpoint. And PayPal and X also ran into all sorts of issues that Bitcoin circumvented later on. More on that in a minute. So at that point, the chance of survival for either of the companies was very limited. After a long competition, they only saw one option, a merger. The two companies became one with a 50-50 split. But as often, a bigger company is not necessarily better. It became a lot slower, a lot more bureaucratic, and had more divergent ideas about what the vision of the company is. This led to Thiel resigning. And it also led to the firing of Bill Harris, who came on board as the CEO after the merger. Elon took his place until he went on a honeymoon trip. What happened? Well, <coughs> yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> gotten married earlier that year and not had any vacation or honeymoon or anything so it was kind of a combined financing trip slash honeymoon yeah and <laughs> <laughs> and anyway but away for two weeks um, and there was just so much there was just a lot of worry um, and that that caused uh, uh, the management team to decide that I wasn't the right guy to run the company not the nicest thing to come back after your honeymoon and being fired by your board without having the chance to defend yourself. Anyway, PayPal also had a tough time in the regulatory field. It was a new finance thing, and finance regulators don't particularly like new finance things. Bitcoin itself doesn't really face these issues. Only Bitcoin companies like exchanges do, because Bitcoin, the network, simply can't be regulated. It's TikTok next block, no matter what your policy is. Once PayPal got their regulatory stuff out of the way, they finally IPO'd and got bought by eBay shortly after. eBay seemingly couldn't make their own solution, Billpoint, work. Now the real bureaucracy starts with many of the top tier talents leaving. These guys became known as the PayPal Mafia, for once because of this picture, and more importantly because of their impact on Silicon Valley. Tesla, SpaceX, Palantir, YouTube, Yelp, LinkedIn and many other big products and companies were created by former PayPal employees and founders. That is massive. None of them created Bitcoin though. This is not 100% confirmed since no one knows who Satoshi is, but it's unlikely that any PayPal member made Bitcoin happen. It just feels like some of them wanted to do something like that initially, but then just pretty much settled with PayPal instead as the completion of their mission. PayPal will give citizens of the world more control over their money than they ever had before. This is not necessarily wrong. It's just nowhere near what Bitcoin can provide in terms of individual freedom. I believe Thiel knew this, and it's for the same reason why he thought he met Satoshi. Max Levchin, the former PayPal CTO on the other hand, has always been quite critical about Bitcoin since its inception. My view on its value as currency is that it's probably never going to work out. Uh, my view of it as an asset class, I think it's badly inflated. This recording is 8 years old, but his viewpoint hasn't really changed much. During the interview, he points out how he has a high admiration for the white paper and at least how he's not certain about his viewpoint about the economic implications. He thinks a state-controlled cryptocurrency is much more likely to succeed and thinks monetary control by a state is the better model. I completely disagree with this as, in my eyes, it erases most of the advantages that a cryptocurrency can have in the first place. Bitcoin achieved what eGold didn't. You see, eGold was run by a company. In the year 2000, there was an eGold conference in Anguilla. There were about 200 people on this Caribbean beach. Teal was one of them, and Satoshi might have been there too. eGold failed and Satoshi may have learned why. Even a company, even a corporate form, was too governmentally linked. So naturally, Bitcoin was the answer to eGold, and Satoshi learned that you had to be anonymous and you had to not have a company. Teal believes that's what Satoshi learned during this conference. Not Nick Szabo, Adam Beck or Vaidai have published their works under a pseudonym. 
but Satoshi did, and so it will stay a puzzle who he is, which is one of the, if not the most important factor to Bitcoin's success. There are only interesting hunches about this mystery. It probably wasn't one of the PayPal members. It more likely was one of the four candidates I explored in this video. Go check it out and learn more about Bitcoin's history. Thank you for watching.